What's going on guys? Venomous Fat Man here and I got a brand new OTGT for you. This time I'm talking about E3 2011. I'm going to run down pretty much the best of what I thought from all the big press conferences and some of the reveals and what was on the showroom floor during E3 2011. So here we go. Let's start off with the press conferences. Let's talk about Microsoft, the first one to go out of the big three. Microsoft, personally, I didn't feel that their press conference was super, super bad. I felt that their press conference out of all the big three was the worst as far as, you know, what they brought to the table. But I wasn't didn't feel that their press conference was completely terrible right off the bat and was completely a waste of my time. Here's the thing with Microsoft. They went a lot with a lot of the Kinect stuff that they were really pushing. They were pretty much saying that all the third-party developers that were developing games for the Xbox 360 are going to be supporting Kinect in one way or another. One of the big features, which I thought was pretty cool, is what a lot of these games are doing from a lot of different companies like BioWare, like Ghost Reek, uh, was it Ubisoft, and a whole bunch of spots. They're actually using voice uh, commands with the Kinect. So in the case of uh, what is it, Mass Effect, you could actually say what choices that you want during the dialogue sequences or order your specific teammates that are with you in battle to different spots and to execute different actions i thought that was pretty cool but it's really a little bit too similar to what you found in other generations of games like older generations for example like socom socom uses that a lot in a game like mass effect the only problem i have with that is that during the dialogue sequences if i say something like that or a particular like uh, option from the, any of the choices that i can make and after I say something, the character Shepard himself actually says something afterwards. It kind of loses the immersion factor in there. So, you know, I kind of got a little bit annoyed by that, to be honest with you. I wish they had just did it where I just say something and then the other character responds. I thought that would be pretty cool. But there's not really much for me else to complain about. It's The game's going to be dope. Besides that, they show they opened up the show with Modern Warfare 3. Now, I've said it already in one of my past videos when I was talking about the Microsoft press conference individually. I'm really impressed with what they showed with Modern Warfare 3. I think the single-player campaign is going to be awesome. I was really impressed where... Was it the guy that was playing? He actually came up from the actual water after he had planted some depth charges on a nuclear submarine. After it surfaced and he went up, you look up and all of a sudden there's all of New York City completely, you know, destroyed or war torn, and there's a whole bunch of stuff going on and ships all over the place in New York Harbor. And you get on top of a what is it, a jet ski or some type of boat or whatnot, and you're scrolling, you know, strolling all over the place. You're riding on top of uh, battleships that are sinking and stuff like that. I thought that was pretty cool. I was really impressed. What I think a lot of people still have an issue with, you know, as far as like having problems with the Call of Duty franchise, is that they get too caught up in how bad sometimes the multiplayer could be, or some of the problems, or a lot of the problems, I should say, that the multiplayer has. The single-player campaigns, in my opinion, for a lot of the Call of Duty games have been superb, especially Modern Warfare 1, you know, Call of Duty 4. Black Ops was pretty good. Modern Warfare 2 was pretty good also, to be honest with you. It wasn't as good as Part 1, but it's somewhat decent. And this one, from what I've seen, I hope is going to be pretty decent. I, I really think that it's going to be a lot better than it was in the previous uh, iterations of that uh, Modern Warfare name brand, Modern Warfare franchise. Main point is this, is that they get too caught up on the problems with the multiplayer and rather than judging it as an overall whole for a game. So I think Modern Warfare 3 is going to be dope. I was impressed for it, but I still got other games on my plate which are much bigger in my opinion. They also showed some Battlefield 3 stuff. Battlefield 3 stuff was pretty cool. A little kind of like little teaser here and there. But moving on from there, they closed it off with Halo 4. Halo 4, they got leaked earlier in the day, about a good, maybe about three, four hours earlier. I saw the tweet on there. You guys know I did a video about it. I put the actual image of the actual leak that was there. It was from the website that they were building, and somebody had messed up and forgot that it wasn't, you're not supposed to show up before E3. But it was pretty much a screenshot from the actual teaser trailer, which shows Master Chief where he was at after uh, the events of Halo 3. And a whole bunch of stuff goes on. You know, Cortana calls him, wakes him up. He looks outside, and there's this big machine that his ship is going into, and there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. So there's a lot of little nuances in there. If you're a Halo fanatic, you would notice them. One of them being the pistol that Master Chief had. He had the pistol from the first Halo, so that's pretty cool. But hopefully down the line, we get to see some gameplay. That would be pretty awesome, to be honest with you. You know, because there's really not much to go on. It's a teaser, so we know it's coming. So that's pretty cool. Now, moving on from there. Let's go over to EA, EA's press conference. Big things that was going on with EA. Battlefield 3, they finally showed a montage of the multiplayer, and some of the people in the actual E3 convention floor got to play Battlefield 3 multiplayer, which was awesome. I was really impressed with it. The overall presentation of it looks very similar to that of the single player, and I love it. It looks awesome. They weren't, from what I was reading about it, they weren't 
they didn't have the full Frostbite 2.0 engine there as far as like the destructible uh, objects and the particles and debris all over the place. You know, just for the sake of that E3 demo that they had on the showroom floor, I'm pretty sure when the game is launched fully complete and everything, it's going to be in there in the game, obviously, and I think it's going to look amazing. I think it's probably going to be better than Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer. The single player I thought was off the hook. You know, the actual video that they showed the level where it was the tank level where you're controlling a specific tank and you look in this desert shooting a whole bunch of enemy tanks. And, you know, they have the different uh, what is it, infrared vision and stuff. You're calling an airstrikes trying to get rid of uh, batteries and stuff. That was pretty cool. I loved it. It looked awesome. From that, they also showed some Mass Effect 3. Mass Effect 3 looked awesome. It looked really cool. I'm really impressed with the stuff that's going on with that. I think the story is going to take a lot more of a darker turn this time around. And I'm re really excited to actually check that one out. So, they also talked a little bit about some FIFA. They showed off the new Madden. You know, they talked a little bit about the Madden there. They had a little presentation going for it. And that was pretty much the big gist of EA for the most part. They talked about a bunch of other games in there. But those were the picks that, for me, that I think had the bigger presence out of anything. Besides that, moving on over to Ubisoft. Ubisoft, Assassin's Creed Revelations. They showed a new trailer. Ezio is a lot older this time. He's looking a lot more mature. You know, he's growing with age. This is his final game as far as, you know, his trilogy and his part of the Assassin's Creed storyline. So hopefully after this game, Ubisoft could go back and now work on Assassin's Creed 3 and maybe give us a new character to play around with, if not Desmond himself in the modern day. That would be pretty cool. I'm looking forward to it. I'm definitely going to be checking out Assassin's Creed Revelations because I think the game looks awesome. Uh, Ezio so far is my favorite out of the entire Assassin's Creed you know, saga. I think he's a really great character, really fleshed out from Assassin's Creed 2, and he's done nothing but grow in every single game afterwards. So that's pretty cool. Besides that, we got a big announcement from Ubisoft, Far Cry 3. They, it was completely, you know, came out of left field for me, and I'm pretty sure a lot of other people there. They showed off a cool little neat trailer, so a lot of people got excited for it. That's going to be awesome. Cannot wait to check that one out, too. Now, moving on from EA, let's go over to Sony. What went down with Sony? I have to say that I was really kind of uh, satisfied with the way that Sony had presented themselves and handled the topic of the PlayStation Network being down, the outage. So, they pretty much, you know... Jack Tran comes out, he says a couple words about it, you know, he says that there's a big elephant in the room and you can't help but just acknowledge it a little bit. So he talked about it, he talked about his friend being a press, or part of a journalist in the video game press, and he said that, well, you know what guys, there, you're welcome, everybody loves controversy, he tells me, so there you go guys. You know, he played it off really well, he kind of joked about it, he was still professional and serious about it, that was pretty cool. So, when they got past that, they started talking about some games. Number one, Battlefield 3. Battlefield 3 on the PlayStation 3 is going to be shipping with Battlefield 1943, which I think is going to be pretty cool. It's a lot more value for your dollar because you're not just paying for one awesome game. You're getting two games for the price of one awesome game. So that's amazing. That's pretty cool. I'm really happy about that. I cannot wait to get a PlayStation 3 version of that game. That's going to be cool. Besides that, we got a chance to check out Uncharted 3. So Uncharted 3 looked amazing. I was really impressed with how the way it looked. They showed off a level where Drake, pretty much he's in this ship, and he gets into a firefight, and all of a sudden water starts pouring inside of the ship, and he has to pretty much you know, fight his way out and survive his way throughout the entire time. That was pretty awesome. I liked that. Another big surprise, which really caught me by surprise and I was really happy about, was Sly 4, or the next Sly Cooper game. I forgot the exact name of it at the moment, but there's a brand new Sly Cooper game that's coming out, and I'm really happy about that because Sly Cooper is a franchise that's really good. It is one of the stronger franchises that they've had in recent times. I was hoping... To be honest with you, I was hoping for an announcement of a new Crash Bandicoot game, but we didn't get that, and which kind of sucks, but it was pretty cool that we got this one. So it's, it's a decent game, it's a decent franchise, it's only going to get better with time. Besides that, we got to check out Resistance, Resistance 3. Resistance 3 looked awesome, they showed off some stuff, there's a whole big bundle that's coming out with Resistance 3. On top of that, if you get the PlayStation, uh, what is it, 3D TV that they have out that they had shown at during the press conference, if you buy that, you not only get that TV, you get a copy of Resistance 3, and you get, I believe it's the Zapper, or the actual uh, PlayStation Move uh, gun controller, or something like that. But it was pretty cool, there's a lot of good bundles, and on top of that, there's an extra bundle that's coming out for Resistance 3. I forgot the exact contents of it now. You can look it up online. They say it during the press conference. But it's a lot of value for your dollar. That's really, really cool. So I was really happy about that. Besides that, 
pretty much they also show the PlayStation Vita. Now, a lot of people were dismayed at the fact that they didn't stick with the name NGP or PSP2, but pretty much the Vita looks awesome. The Vita, when I was looking at it during the press conference, they were actually showing Uncharted Golden Abyss during as far as like one of the gameplay that they had the demos and i like how it's it's looking right now i really think that uncharted golden abyss looks almost exactly like how uncharted 3 looks on the playstation 3 they weren't lying when they were saying that the games were going to look this good they also have another game called ruin which is pretty much this dungeon crawler where you can not only continue play your game on your playstation vita but you could save it you know upload it to the little storage thing that they have online and then you could continue it on your playstation 3 if you decide to go back and forth like that i think that's pretty cool I think that's amazing. With the PlayStation Vita, they have two versions of it where one of it's going to be started at $250 or $249.99, which is just the normal wireless PlayStation Vita. But the version after that, they have a 3G version of the PlayStation Vita, which is going to run about $300. So there's a lot of stuff that they talked about. I was really surprised at the price point. I thought it was going to be a lot more expensive than the Nintendo 3DS, but it's some good stuff going on. We got games that are coming out for PlayStation Vita. We got Uncharted, Golden Abyss. We have a Killzone game in the works. I'm pretty sure we're going to get a Metal Gear Solid game down the line. It's just bound to happen. And we have Ruin so far. So there was a bunch of other games that they have shown there, but those were my big picks and stuff that I really felt that had the strongest presence out of Sony's uh, press conference. They were pretty good. If anything, they come to a close second in my book as far as how good their press conference was, followed by Microsoft. Now, Let's get to the next one that was the following day, Nintendo. The reason why I felt that Nintendo's press conference was the best one out of the entire E3 event, you know, for all three slash four of those days, was because the presence and the sheer magnitude that they had the, of was it for their reaction to the Wii U, which is Project Cafe, which is Nintendo's new console, was so massive. I felt it so, you know, it was so apparent. You know, not only when I was watching the press conference from the audience members you could hear there, but I was on my Twitter, on my phone, and I'm looking at it, as well as looking at the press conference, and I see on my Twitter, pretty much that same moment when they unveiled the, play, the Wii U, the Twitter blew up like crazy. Everybody was like, oh my God, like, whoa, like, holy crap, Nintendo's on some new stuff right now. So, here's the deal with the Wii U. The stuff that they had shown a lot during the press conference was the actual controller for the Wii U. That tablet is the controller, mind you. The actual Wii U itself, if you went online and actually looked at some of the pictures that people were snapping snapshots at and uploading them online to their websites, it almost looks like a skinnier version of the Xbox 360, which is pretty cool. The graphics on there look amazing. I saw the demo for The Legend of Zelda that they had playing there during the course of the actual event. That looked pretty cool. I saw the Wii Sports, uh, what is it, version, or the Wii Sports game that they had that they showed during the little demo of their press conference, where they took the tablet, stuck it on front of, I guess, a Wii Zapper or something, and they were looking at it, and on the actual uh, screen itself, it looks like you're kind of like your scope, which I'm like, oh my god, that's made for sniping, that's awesome, that's just, bare, that, like, pretty much, you know, connection or that peripheral, what is it, uh, connectability like that, was made for games like Ghost Recon Future Soldier, which is on Wii U, by the way, Battlefield 3, which is on Wii U, by the way, because the guy, the president of EA came out during Nintendo's press conference and said that we're giving them full support, and in the background, you see a picture of the front cover of Battlefield 3, so, yeah, that's gonna be dope. Besides that, they also showed a brand new Mario Kart game for the Nintendo 3DS, which I thought looked pretty cool because now you're going to actually be able to customize your cars in that game. That looked awesome. They showed some Star Fox 3DS, which was pretty cool. They showed Super Mario 3DS, actual gameplay this time, where we actually see it in motion. It looks like a cross between Super Mario 64 and Super Mario Bros. 3 as far as like the suits and stuff, and with a little bit of elements from new Super Mario Bros. thrown in there. That was pretty cool. I thought that was awesome. The main thing, though, that you have to get out of the Wii U is that the tablet and the way that you play it and the type of games that you're getting for it is really top-notch and way far advanced than what was on the, the, was it the Nintendo Wii, the first Wii. Here's my point. Well, during the actual video that they had showed, they had the tablet. They were playing some new Super Mario Brothers on there, playing it. Somebody on there wanted to change the television channel. They changed it, and they brought the game from their television screen to the tablet screen and continued playing like nothing was going on. And then when that person was finished, they were able to flip, touch the screen, which is a touch screen, by the way, and fling the actual uh, game that they had there back to their television screen. That, I think, is really freaking cool. And on top of that, the Wii Sports game that they had, they were playing a golf version 
of the actual golf mini game or whatnot. They actually placed the towel on the ground, grabbed a Wii Mo, actually had the ball below them. They hit the ball, and all of a sudden, when you hit the ball, like at the moment of contact, they actually on the actual screen, the dust or the sand kicked up after they hit it. I thought that was pretty freaking cool, to be honest with you. They had some other features on there, including that what looked like it was pretty much you're taking the stylus from the actual DS and actually drawing on the tablet like if it was a Wacom tablet, like actually drawing pictures and stuff. That was pretty cool. And from what I was also hearing and reading about online is that the new Nintendo Wi-Fi, the new Nintendo Online uh, uh, what is it, uh, network, it's supposed to be almost very similar, if not better, than that on Xbox Live Arcade or Xbox Live and PlayStation Network. Pretty much it's going to be on par with their own flair thrown into there. Which is good because Nintendo's actually listening to their fans and actually telling them, listen, your online component needs to be fixed up. So, all in all is this. Oh, by the way, there's a new Pikmin game coming out, for the record, for all those people that didn't know about that. I didn't find out about that during the press conference, but I went online and looked at it. There's a brand new Pikmin game coming out, so you might want to go check that out. So, overall thing is this. As far as all the press conferences are concerned, the best one that had the biggest presence and the best uh, gratification from people that were in the audience was Nintendo. I felt that they really brought their A-game. They're really trying to cater to the hardcore. They really, you know, really kind of, you know, listen to their fans and they're really doing a lot of stuff as far as, you know, trying to really adhere to that audience where they felt, where it's the hardcore audience, I should say, that felt that they were being alienated with the Wii and it's kind of like geared towards the casual audience. They really brought, bring in a lot of games that people want. You know, they showed some Kid Icarus. They showed the multiplayer of Kid Icarus, by the way. They announced a brand new Super Smash Brothers game that's going to be currently in development. That's already, you know, being worked on. They announced what is it? Uh, what is it? Star Fox 3DS. They talked about Mario Kart when they showed us. There's a lot. There was a lot of stuff coming from Nintendo, and then all the third-party developers. You know, talking about Metal Gear Solid. You know, from uh, what is it? Konami. Uh, they have EA. You know, a whole bunch of different spots or different third-party developers are saying that they're getting behind the Wii U because you know they were surprised at the different types of capabilities this system has. They're really happy about that. They had the biggest presence out of everybody and the most gratifying. You know reaction from the people that were in the audience and from the people on the internet so that's why i felt that they were the best of show as far as press conferences are concerned at e3 this year sony comes in a second because i was really impressed with sony i was really impressed with how they presented themselves how they they took on the fact that they had just gone through a tough time with the network outage with of the psn they really handled themselves and it really showed out some pretty good games Microsoft, although not terrible at all, was the weakest of all three. They really kind of, you know, they focused on what made them Microsoft. They really kind of, you know, pushed the Kinect and really tried to really put the Kinect out there to get people behind it. But a lot of people weren't really feeling that. They weren't really kind of happy that a lot of companies are gearing more towards the Kinect support than anything else. They wanted much more better games out there. So... On top of that, also, same thing goes for EA, and same thing goes for Ubisoft. There were games there, there were p- things that people got excited about, but they just did not have a bigger presence than some of the other press conferences are concerned. The showroom floor was pretty cool. They showed a bunch on, uh, what is it, online, they showed a whole bunch of videos of people playing the different games, you know, playing the Wii U, playing with around with the PlayStation Vita, you know, checking out some of the demos that they had to offer. It was a pretty good E3, I have to say. It was a lot better, to be honest with you, than the past couple of years of E3, so... One thing I was disappointed about, which I really did not see a big presence about, because you guys know how much of a Square Enix fan I am, they really did not talk a lot about what's going on with Square Enix. They did have Final Fantasy XIII 2 on the actual demo floor, you know, where Sony's uh, was it actual uh, was it event was going on. They actually had a demo that was playable with the battle system and everything, but they never mentioned that, and they never mentioned Final Fantasy Versus 13, which leads me to believe that a lot of those Japanese-oriented games are going much more towards the actual TGS unveiling. So we're going to hear a lot more from those Japanese developers to come to TGS this year, and that's more due, in fact, to all the different stuff that was, you know, as far as the disaster and stuff that's been going on in Japan. So I think that would be pretty cool. You know, I don't mind waiting as long as I get my games that I've heard about. Oh, also, speaking of Japanese developers, Ono revealed that in the PlayStation Vita version of Street Fighter X Tekken, you're going to be able to play as Cole from Infamous. So that's pretty cool. You know, seems a little out of place, but I can understand what he was doing there. And it was pretty interesting that we're getting a version of that game for the PlayStation Vita. So it's pretty cool. So 
overall i loved e3 this year thought it was a good show better than the past couple years now i want to think know what you guys thought about it leave your comments and video responses i don't mind just keep it civil let me know what you guys think if you guys enjoyed e3 this year or if you hated it what you felt was the best in show of e3 the best press conference the best company to really come out during e3 this year and i'll talk to you guys again soon that's all i got for you guys take it easy everybody i'm venomous fat man and that was only the goddamn truth people talk to y'all later